Bookkeepers, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. In this short video, I'm going to explain the difference between an income code in your chart of accounts versus a class versus an item. It'll be a short video. It complements um, the QuickBooks Online for Landlords 2022 video I made last week, but this kind of um, sums it up in a much shorter video. People ask me all the time, I'm getting these three confused. And hopefully this is just an easier way um, to explain this. All right, let's get started. Okay, so um, I made some, like a really big video on this whole setup, but I, I thought I would just explain a little more. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, I get really confused between items, income codes and classes. So I'm just gonna break this down um, in a short video. First thing, sorry, this is this new file and it's, it's just so crazy. Okay. Here is your chart of accounts. Now I found that in the bookkeeping tab and then down in chart of accounts. And it's structured kind of like a balance sheet so to have your bank accounts first, your assets, liabilities, equity, and then it goes to income. Um, and then here are the codes that we have, right? So I, I structure everything usually by each property and then I make sub um, income codes within the property. This allows you to run a PL and kind of expand and see all your units and, or you can kind of pop it up into one or like one rental income. I also use bad debt expense as a negative income code. And that is because you're writing off debt. I don't want you to think of that as um, an overhead expense. It's actually hitting right against your income. So it should be up at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna set up, let's say there's another unit in building two. And then I'll show you just the main steps of what you were doing here without having to watch that video I made that's an hour and a half. But bear with me because this is a new way QuickBooks has made the chart of accounts, which I find to be very hard. We're going to make it unit 3A, building two. So this is what I hate. Create a category under, I want to say income. I don't, I just don't understand why it's like this. We're going to say it's under rental income, but I actually need it to be building two. So I had to type that because I want to make it a sub account. Don't pick a liability, those are security deposits. So I'm gonna say building two. But then I don't know why it won't let me select it, I picked it. Okay, select. Okay, category name, unit 3A. And here now it shows that we're under building two. So that's your very first step because you can't create items and, and invoice um, a tenant if you don't have first that. Okay, so I don't like the way I named it, so I can just click edit, unit 3A. And I like a lot of description in your chart of accounts, building two. And I try and make them all look the same. Okay, so now you have unit 3A, building two. So your next step is you need to create the item. Now. People ask me like, what is an item? I don't understand what's the difference between an item and a income code. If you were just to, if you weren't invoicing your tenants and you're just posting what income you get and you're not tracking who owes you, you have no, what's called accounts receivable. You could actually just do this. You wouldn't need an item. The item is for invoicing. That's the answer. 
Why do you need an item? It's so you can invoice and link to that. So let's say you're just making a deposit. Let's say 3A gave you $1,000. I didn't make a customer here, but we're not talking about that, but we'll pretend there's a customer. Unit 3A, add new. Customer, that'd have to be fixed later. So it nestles under the building. I could just say January rent, check. $1,500. And this is where you need to do your class. Okay, so we have unit 1A, unit 2A in general. So I could do this on the fly and I could say add new, but see, I can't. I won't do it yet because I want to make it a sub account of that building. Unit 3A, save and close. So what did that do? Sorry, I have such a hard time with this new format. It's in business overview, e-quick reports. QuickBooks is gonna be really kind of maybe slower in January. I don't know why it's not running. So you can see right here, unit 3A building two. This was, if I click into this, it's only from just me posting a deposit. If you look at these, from me making an invoice. So if you only make deposits, you can't track how much people owe you. Okay, so I've explained the difference. The next thing though, is we need to create the class for unit 3A building two. So click the icon over here, click all lists, Here's classes. So we need to add a building two dash unit three A. Okay, so click new. Couldn't do it on the fly. You can't make the subclass. That, that's so silly. Building two, so it's a subclass. And then you would just write right in this part. I think, no, you have to write unit. Three A. Three A. So now we have that. So now let's go back, click the business overview, profit and loss. We'll click this one we just made. Here you will always, if, you're, if you have individual units and you really want to know things about the units, make the classes. I just typed a three and it brought up three A, so that's kind of what we do. So then, if you have everything classed out, you do profit and loss by class. And I have building one, total building ones, building two, built whatever. So by doing this, you can really look at individual units or buildings. So right here on this gear icon, click with that. It must not be that. Oh wait, excuse me, right here, classes, but I'm gonna try and edit the class. Oh, here we go, customize. Here we go, filter. Right now it says all, but let's just do building two and its units. Okay, and so by doing building two, you can see here's the unit 2A. 
1A. So look, I must have messed something up because this says 1A and this says 2A. Okay, so see how I screwed this up? Here on this class, it should be building to unit 1A. So when you save that, so building to, because we only have one month and in, put it here. You show these three, they should unit 2A goes with this income. This is the income code on the left and these are the classes. So now if on the bottom, as you wrote expenses like utilities or repairs for each unit, you would class it. And then they would show up here. So let me just do one entry. So I say all the time, I want every income for every unit, but then, you know, you run out of income codes in QuickBooks Online. So what I would say though, is in the expense codes, keep it really general and then use your class. So we could say this is, I don't know which one I was running that on, building to unit 1A. to 1A, what A did I do? Oh, I didn't put any amount in it. Take that. Don't worry about customer project. I, I only like that to nest things so you can track your money. I don't like to run customer and job reports. Okay. So see now the 200 is here. Now, if you run a normal PL without the classes, you will see the income codes, but with your expense codes, I only want you to really see that if you class things. All right, so see how you could really track different repairs and maintenance for the unit just by using that class. Okay, so that explains classes, items. Okay, I think I set one up in a, a minute ago, but the item links to the income code. So if you're doing an invoice, that's where you will see that part. Okay, so get paid and paid. Let's go here to Sally Smith. Let's make her another invoice in January. So we know she's unit one and she's in building one. So here's the item, building one. Building one, unit one. And it came up because you can um, set up a preset amount. And then here on this class, building one, unit one. So I think we set up this building two unit 3A. I didn't make a customer yet. I don't wanna go through the whole thing. I just wanna explain classes, income codes, and items. So also product and service in here. So we did building two, we need a building two dash unit 3A. So we'll say new, I always do service. Building two dash unit 3A, class, this is good. You would wanna pick that, then it'll auto fill on your invoice. But income is where you're gonna pick the building to unit 3A. So anytime you use this item and you run reports on how many times you've used that item to invoice, it links you to the 3A. Now you saw in that, clean just deposit I made, I was able to go straight to that income code. But the item gets you to the detailed income reports. It's kind of how it works. Okay, so getting 
get paid in pay. Let's see, customers. I'm going to make another customer now. Even though I said I wasn't going to do it. I just don't like this new, here we go, new customer. That would be a sub customer of building two. I like to put the expiration of when the lease is. I'm a sub customer of building to bill this customer. Okay. Then payment and billing. It's always due on receipt. Click save. Okay. So now I have my 3A. I can create an invoice. Building 23A. I didn't put in a rate, let's say 2000, but my class came up, which is great. Save and close. Then you could receive the payment. I just want to receive the payment so I can show you. On the PL. Business overview. Profit and loss by class. Keep those these. Okay, so this thirty five hundred dollars for three A has the two thousand I made on an invoice in fifteen. I just did an easy deposit. Now let me just show you one more time why I like classes. We could just narrow it down to building two by going customize. Filter, click class, click building two, and it's subs. And you can see which units you have. They should step down into their code by class. Okay. And then you can also just to see a general of how you're doing a normal profit and loss. Let's, do it for, let's see what else I've posted in here. You can see the different amounts for each unit right here, or you can always collapse it up. And I did that by post, touching that little down arrow. And here you can see, I think this was a write-off I showed in a prior video. It was a credit memo I moved to, so I didn't have to look at the amount he was never gonna pay. All right, I hope this helped you um, understand the difference between income codes, items, and classes. All right, have a great day.